What's up everyone out there in YouTube land? So today we're going to have a look at a pretty interesting device. Yes, this one coming from, you guessed it, Segeli. This one is called the Top One. Yes, the Top One. I do got the drop sitting on top, the Top One. And you guys can see the wattage on here. Nice big display. And I will say, the display on this thing is beautiful. The mod itself, you know, it's a matter of opinion and taste, but you can't lie and say this screen is not good looking. Beautiful screen on here. Got it loaded up with some of the Dat Cookie Batter Dough. How about Dat Stupid Name Dough? That would have been a better choice, but <laughs> just my opinion. Let's have a quick vape and we'll talk about the top one. Who's on top? I'm on top. I'm the top one. Yes. I have no clue what's going on. Very slow ramp up time. There we go. Once it gets going, it's not actually that bad. Now, the top one was sent over directly by Segeli for the purpose of this review. If you guys are looking to pick one up, I did do a search online. A lot of websites have this thing. Going price, anywhere between $59.99 and $79.99. Let's check out the Segeli Top 1 presentation box. It's actually pretty nice on here. It comes in this, uh, this little tin. Inside the box, you're going to get the Top 1 device. They're going to toss in a micro USB charging cable and, of course, your user manual. Dimensions, we're looking at 89 millimeters tall, 55.8 millimeters wide, and 32 millimeters thick. It is constructed of a zinc alloy, but it does have a nice weight to it, and it feels real good in the hands. This is a Dual 18 650 device, so let's compare it up next to the Dual 18 650 V-Fang, and also the Dual 18 650 213. You'll see it is fairly wide, and that's due to the large screen that they're using, but once again, it is a really comfortable device. Along the top, we're going to have your stainless steel 510 connection with a gold-plated spring-loaded pin in the center. What I like most is that the 510 on here is nice and centered, so it's going to line up with everything. And this device will actually look good with atomizers up to 30 millimeters before you get any overhang. Here's a 30 millimeter RDA. And honestly, this setup, I know most of you probably think it looks crazy looking, but this actually looks pretty nice. Now along the side, we're going to have your firing switch, and this is where things start to go downhill. This is a very comfortable button, but the problem is it's a very hollow plastic button. You could just tap on it, and you can feel how cheap and plastic the button is. I wish that they made this button out of some sort of steel or metal. It would have been so much better. Aside from it being plastic and hollow... It actually is a really comfortable switch, very responsive, nice and clicky. Uh, we do get a little bit of button rattle. Along the bottom, we're going to have your famous Segeli battery door. And I will say, once again, with normal usage, I did not experience any issues with the door, but it suffers from the same issue that the previous mods suffered from. Slam it against your hand, and the door easily pops open. Um, so if you're going to be rough with the battery door, if you're going to be rough with the mod, if you're going to slam it down on your tabletop, you'll see there the door pops open very easily. And as you guys know, Segeli has an issue with their battery doors. I don't know why they don't test these devices first, but pop open the door. It will be using dual 18 650s. Of course, they're not included. And we do have battery rattle and the door will pop open again. <laughs> This is where things get interesting, and I know most people are going to think this is probably really ugly, but I think this screen is beautiful looking. I think this is a nice looking device, and I'm probably one of the only people that think this is a nice looking device, but this screen is amazing looking. Just check out that screen. Um, we're going to go through the menu in a moment, but when you adjust the wattage, you can see the little RPM gauge. Um, mm -hmm. I just think that's so cool. I don't know why, but... Beautiful looking screen, nice and bright, easy to read. Wattage up and down buttons are spaced out. They're very comfortable to use. They are made of plastic once again. And then we have your micro USB charge port. This one does have 2.5 amp charging over USB. And I noticed that a lot of these new devices coming from Segeli don't mention firmware updates anywhere in the manual or on the website. But the original VFang does have firmware updates. So either... They're just not mentioning it in the manual, or they don't offer firmware updates. But as it stands in the manual, this one does not have firmware updates. 
Now along the back, we're going to have the Segeli logo at the top one, and this is actually a stainless steel plate, and depending on the color you get, it's either going to be gold-plated stainless or just regular stainless, and for some strange reason, I actually like the way this looks. I think the combination of this emblem, the large screen, the gold button, and the carbon fiber along the side right here, I think it looks like a really classy looking mod. So when the device is turned off, we actually have the time displayed on the main screen. Um, the screen does turn off every couple seconds, and if you press the firing switch, it will turn back on. Five clicks will turn it on and off. One, two, three, four, five. Did I hit it? Five, there we go. There's gonna be the startup screen. It does start up kind of slow. Now this device will go up to 230 watts in power mode. The temp range, 200 up to 570 degrees Fahrenheit. The voltage output, one volts up to 7.5 volts, and it will fire down to a 0.05. This theme right here is my favorite. So, so easy to read. Just love how bright this screen is and love how large the font is. Of course, you can change it uh, to do so. One, two, three, go to set, and then go to GUI, and you can change out for this one right here. You can actually choose from a few of them, but we'll go to this one, and now you have the wattage displayed there. Well, we're in temp mode at the moment, but you got the wattage displayed there, temperature, the time, et cetera, et cetera. Go back into the menu, one, two, three. We'll select mode, power mode, you can select your boost, I'll select hard, and now you see we have your wattage, and as you adjust the wattage, the little speedometer goes pretty quick too, actually. One, two, three. We'll go back into mode, we'll select stainless steel, Fahrenheit, and now in temperature mode, what you can do is you can hold down the wattage up and down button together, and you can read the resistance and also lock in the resistance. Going back into the menu, one, two, three again, Go over to set, and then we can adjust the preheat for power mode. We can adjust the preheat for temp mode. You can adjust the timeout. I have it set for 20 seconds. You can adjust the actual time. And then once again, you could change the theme. And on the main screen, we'll hold this down. Wattage down in the firing switch will lock it. You'll see the little lock symbol turn red. We'll unlock it. By the way, you could still vape when it's locked, which is kind of a bummer. You just can't adjust the power. Wattage up in the firing switch will display your voltage. And aside from that, five clicks will turn it on and off. One, two, three, four, five. So let's talk a little bit about the top one. Now, for starters, I will say when it comes to looks, I've seen a lot of comments on Instagram and Facebook. A lot of people saying it is an ugly, ugly looking thing. But for some reason, I don't know. I love the way it looks. I love the large screen. I love the carbon fiber. I love the gold trim. I love the emblem on the back. Something about it just makes me love the way it looks. And I'm probably the only one that likes the way it looks. So I'm going to disagree with you guys on that one. Now, it will look good with your larger atomizers up to 30 millimeters. Big mod, big atomizer. So that's a bonus. We talked about the screen. The screen is just flat out awesome. The button is a disappointment. It is comfortable. It did, give, did not give me any issues, but it's plastic and it's hollow sounding and it just feels super, super cheap. I don't know why they made this metal and this plastic. It doesn't make really any sense, but um, the wattage button, same deal. These are a little bit tighter, but they're still made of plastic. They have that hollow sound. Now you're probably wondering, does it suffer some, from the same battery door issue as all the other Segeli mods? The answer is yes, it does. But if you're just using it normally, and just vaping on it, the door doesn't pop open. But if you're too rough with it, if you slam it down or anything like that, the door will come popping open. And I'm assuming all these newer Segeli mods have the same battery door issue. Uh, there's very little, there's a very little tiny latch here. And I don't know, in about a month's time, that latch is not going to be so strong. And this door is just going to be popping open out of nowhere. So very disappointed about that. Aside from that, it, I noticed that it ramps up really slow for some reason. I don't know why. Like, I'll be vaping on my Tricor Fuse Claptons, and this device, you know, the other Segeli devices were fine, but this one ramps up really slow. And, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Just, aside from that, though, it seemed to perform okay. It doesn't seem like it's doing the advertised wattage, but then again, none of these devices really do. But, uh... 
it's one of those, you know, it's a conversation piece, as they say. Um, I would probably buy it if it was probably a few dollars. I'm going to keep this one, of course, because it looks good on my shelf. But um, if I seen it online, not knowing about it, I would probably buy it without a, without a doubt. But after knowing about the battery door, after knowing about the cheap plastic button, after knowing about the slow ramp up time, um, probably not. Prob you know, I would probably, if I do continue to use this, I'll probably use a sub-ohm tank on top of here. Something that doesn't require a lot of power. But if you're using an atomizer that requires a lot of power on top of here, you're going to really notice that slow ramp up time. It's going to irritate the hell out of you, and it's going to be it. That's it. So, yeah, that's all I got for you guys today, Sigeli. I'm sorry, but I think I'm done reviewing your mods because they just been garbage lately. Um, they sent over a few. I've used most of them, and I've just been flat out disappointed with all of them. But, I, I mean, this just looks so good. Why couldn't it be good? God damn it. I'm so mad. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got for you guys today. If you have any comments or questions on the top one, please feel free to leave them below. Please hit that subscribe button. I'll talk to everyone very, very soon. Make sure you guys build safe and vape on.